Sheriff Whanau, Shane here. Um, if you're new to my channel, then uh, please consider subscribing. And if you have seen my videos before, then welcome back. Uh, we've been getting heaps of messages lately from you guys, uh, heaps of requests to make a video on how I catch my crayfish. Um, I'm not an expert on that, but I will teach you everything that I do know, and hopefully we can get you guys your first crayfish, eh? Mm, let's get ready to rumble! Okay guys, I'm going to walk and talk you through some of the gear that I use just to get you started out uh, with the crayfish. I've got a two piece uh, wetsuit here, five millimeter, diving that all year round. Same here with your booties and your gloves, that just keeps you warm and protected from all your brace of rocks and anything else that might stab or try and hurt you. These are pretty crucial for crayfish. I see some guys like uh, out there, Tuku, doing his stuff with the uh, no gloves, the old Moldy gloves on, true to that my bro. But yeah, I, <laughs> I prefer not to get stabbed. Next thing up is uh, the fins. Any fins that are gonna make you move in the water, um, it's gonna help you get down and get those craze. A weight belt or a weight harness. I just find that that's better on my back than having a uh, weight belt slide around, but anything will do. That's the next thing you're gonna need is a mask. Um, I've got this one from Cruzy. Um, you just wanna make sure that fits your face nice and snug, um, so you're not getting any leaks. You always wanna take a couple of knives with you. Um, I've got this icky knife here, cheap as, seven bucks. Uh, can't go wrong with that, and if you lose it, not too much of a big expense. Got this other knife that I carry uh, locked into my weight belt. Last of all, we've got this float system here. I've got a float there, a weedy tuna float, and that just helps to keep this catch bag here up. And I've also got a float line with a drop weight on it, and that can just uh, help me to keep my float stationary in the water wherever I'm diving. Probably the most fundamental skill um, that you need to gather crayfish this way is obviously free diving. So if you already know how to free dive, uh, sweet as. Um, but if that's something that you need to learn, something you need to work on, then uh, I'm not an expert in this area, so I'm gonna skip the lesson on free diving today. Yeah, if this is something you're serious about learning, you're gonna have to really invest uh, some decent time educating yourself and continuously working on it. So the four main things I think you should work on uh, and research if you're not a competent free diver is breath hold. Now this is a huge first one. Uh, the longer you can hold your breath underwater, the more time you've got to act underwater and the more you're gonna see. The second one is your duck dive, and that's just how you go from being on the surface of the water and propelling yourself underneath and getting down. The next one is equalizing. Hands down, one of the most important things. Um, the deeper you dive underwater, the more pressure builds up in your ears, and equalizing is basically just a way to counteract that. Last of all, but probably the most important, is safety. If you're just starting out free diving, I would really recommend that you dive with a buddy instead of diving solo. The time that you're resting after each dive is also really important, uh, just to make sure that you're recovering and your body's getting enough oxygen. And there's so much small things that I've missed out on there, um, but that's just a basic we run through um, on some of the fundamentals. At the end of the day, if you really want to get into this, then Put in the time for the education and it'll pay off big time. When I first started diving and trying to get crayfish, I thought to myself, where the frickin' hell are these guys? I think I would have went on about five or six long as dives without even seeing one. All of those failures, uh, all those failed attempts just pushed me harder and made me want to get a crayfish even more. 
I knew if I persevered and just carried on diving, spent more time in the water, I knew eventually I'd come across some crease. I get asked the question a lot, uh, how deep are the crayfish? I get mine in 4 to 10 metres, but that's only because I'm not a very deep diver. From what I've found and where crayfish live is they're going to be in cracks, boulders, uh, underneath ledges, anywhere that's dark really, these guys are hiding away. So what you need to do is you need to get down on their level and basically get to the sea floor. I mean, sometimes you can be lucky and see them from the surface, but you really need to get down to their level uh, underneath and check under those rocks, boulders, crevices, caves. These guys need to be found, they're hiding away. So I've talked a bit about where to find the crayfish, now let's talk about uh, what to do when you find one. You can see here as I pop around the corner, uh, this crayfish, this big buck, can see me, so he backs up into his cave a little bit. Crayfish use their feelers to sense small vibrations in the water, and as you can see, this buck has already got his feelers out because he knows I'm a threat. Now I've already identified that he's got a cave behind him and he's already half backing up, so I was a bit late on this grab, but I still managed to get him. This brings up the very important topic of where to grab the crayfish and how to grab onto them. How you grab your crayfish is really going to depend on how they're positioned. Now you're going to come across multiple different scenarios. Uh, crayfish can be upside down, um, they can be in all sort of nooks and crannies. So how you grab your crayfish is really going to be up to where they are in their cave. Now here's a good example of how we get a strong overhand grip right at the base of those antlers. So let's run that back through in slow motion and take note of what happened. So the goal is to get in close enough to reach him, but not so close that I'm going to scare him away. Then I'm creating some movement down low in front of him using one of my hands, uh, which brings his feelers down and opens him up for a clean grab straight over the top. Once I've got a good grip on the cray, I'll pull him out hard before he can lock down or creep away back inside his hole. Then I use both hands to secure the catch just to make sure he's not going to get away. Now if we rewind that back, you might not have noticed but this cray actually got a really good claw into me. Which brings us to our next subject which is how not to grab a cray. Sammy here is going to demonstrate uh, what happens if you grab a crayfish by the antlers. <laughs> the old antlers! <laughs> oh shit! The next clip I'm going to roll is of a big 3kg buck that I managed to really screw up. I grabbed him right on the base of his back, um, not realising actually how big he was, um, so he was a bit too wide for my hand. And once his tail got going, he managed to slip free. Uh, this resulted pretty much in me grabbing him however I could, which made him lose a couple of legs, and uh, yeah, I really made a mess of things on this one. To make things worse with this grab, um, as I was resurfacing, I repositioned my hands and uh, got in the way of one of his big front claws. Fuck! So my next bit of advice is stay away from those front claws. These bucks are pretty hearty and they will try and protect themselves. One thing you really need to be careful with is when you're entering a cave or putting your arm and extending it into a cave. Um, there could be swell that pushes you further into the cave and also there could be other things in there like eels or you could just get your hand trapped. So a couple of months back I was uh, out diving and I located a crayfish. I put my hand into the hole, boom, grabbed the crayfish, got a nice solid grab and started to pull him out. And as I pulled him out, um, little did I know there was a congaril on the end of it that had come in through the other side of its cave. But yeah, we ended up going halves in the crayfish that day. Once you've secured a crayfish, you need to make sure that you're abiding by all the local regulations and the size limits. Before you go taking a crayfish out of its hole and potentially damaging it, it's good to first get a gauge of the size and whether it's even worth taking in the first place. It can be a little bit tricky at first knowing what's sizable to take and what's not, 
but you will get used to it as you gather more crayfish. The way that we measure crayfish in my area is on the two primary spines on the second segment of the tail. Males and females have different size limits, uh, with the males being 54 centimetres and the females being 60 centimetres. We're allowed to take six crayfish per day per diver, which is more than enough, I think. And we have to release any crayfish with a soft shell or any females that are in berry carrying their eggs. Knowing how to identify a male and a female is really straightforward. Females have more pleopods on their tail and they're also larger. They also have an extra small pincer on their bottom legs and their two front claws don't grow very large. The first sign I come across when identifying a male is those two front claws, they're usually a wee bit bigger. And once you examine the tail of a male, you'll notice it's only got one set of pleopods on each side of it. Not the biggest boy, but he should be legal. Let's have a recap on some of the key points that I've brought up. So when we're trying to find a crayfish, we're looking in all those dark places. Under rocks, under boulders, in caves, crevices, underneath ledges, and anywhere else they can be hiding away. Once we've found a crayfish, we're sizing it up and we're making sure it's going to be worth taking in the first place. Then we're looking at it in its environment and whether it can escape anywhere. Once you've worked out the position of the crayfish, we can go in hard and fast for the grab. Oh, Finishing up, the last sort of thing I wanted to talk about is sustainability. This resource, this taonga that we've got, it's not going to be around forever so we really need to look after it and think about the impact that we're having on the fishery. Charafano, so that wraps up this episode of Kai Down Under. Um, I really hope you learned something from that or took something away from it that you didn't know. Hopefully you guys can get uh, your first crayfish if you haven't got one yet. But um, yeah, like I said at the start of this video, all of these experiences of just um, got through getting out there, doing it, uh, spending more time in the water. So yeah, I'm not an expert. Um, if you've got any other tips or any other information that might help other people out there, then just drop a comment below and let us know your thoughts. One thing I really want to preach is sustainability. You don't have to kill everything. You don't have to take everything. Just take uh, enough for a feed or, you know, whatever you've got planned and yeah, leave some for another day. One other thing I want to preach is manakitanga, um, which is we want to share our kai with our whanau, um, our family, our friends, and um, you know, our kaumatua. So give a feed to somebody who, you know, would really appreciate it. And yeah, that just makes it way more worth it. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, do that now because we've got some pretty cool adventures coming up soon. Um, you know, some are still ahead of us. So yeah, take care guys. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing.